This exercise is the first of a three-parter and it starts off innocently enough with just a linear map and trying to figure out what the stability of its fixed point is. So pause the video and start the calculation. So this linear map obviously has the origin as its fixed point and in order to express the linear map as a matrix so 2x plus y if we write that as a 2 by 2 matrix multiplied by x and y then for the uh, first equation 2x plus y that gives us a 2 here and the 1 there and the second equation x plus y gives us 1 1 so the matrix that we need to, need to consider is this one over here by the way if you were to calculate the jacobian matrix of this uh, map here by taking partial derivatives you would end up with exactly the same matrix which makes a lot of sense because the linear approximation to a linear map is that map itself so nothing surprising here what's also not surprising is the next step which is calculating our friends the eigenvalues of this matrix so we have the determinant 2 minus lambda 1 1 1 minus lambda and that should be equal to 0 so this gives us 2 and then minus 3 lambda plus lambda squared and then finally minus 1 equal to 0 so this gives us lambda squared minus 3 lambda plus 1 equal to zero or the solutions are um, in that case we have minus the coefficient of lambda so that's three plus or minus the square of that coefficient that's nine and then minus four times the product of these coefficients so that's one divided by two times the coefficient of lambda squared so this is three plus or minus square root of 5 divided by 2. Now what's important for our purposes is figuring out if these values are smaller than 1 or bigger than 1 in magnitude. So if we have a plus sign then obviously we have something that's bigger than 1, no problem there. For the case of a minus sign, well remember square root of 5 is obviously lying somewhere between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. So the result will be a value between 2 and 3. So if we have a minus sign here and we subtract that from 3, so then we will end up with a value which is smaller than 1. So one of the eigenvalues will be bigger than 1, one will be smaller than 1. And that's also confirmed by calculating that numerically exactly. One is 2.6 something, the other one is 0.4 something. The conclusion is still the same since one of the eigenvalues is bigger than one and one is smaller than one this is a saddle point okay now on to the next part of this exercise